Gompers, Normalizing the Abnormal, Gompers versus Normal, Part 2. The Gompers curve and a US Eurocentric perspective are massively misleading if you're not alert to the big picture of what's happening in the rest of the world. Note to censors, we use only government data. If you have a problem with the results, speak to the government. We continue our look at the two issues of normalizing the abnormal, being a Western-centric focus, and the choice of Gompertz over normal curve. It's interesting that, of course, the normal curve is the one curve that's not an authorized growth distribution. Other hump curves, sigmoid curves, get authorized, like the logistic curve or the Gompertz curve. But the most basic and useful hump curve is left to be a probability distribution, when in fact it was the first growth distribution to be noted, far and is the closest natural cousin to, and competitor to, the infamous exponential curve. In our work on constant factor growth curves, we explored a simple but profound observation, that exponential and normal curves are two of the three possible families of curve that we can consider as CFG, to be defined as curves whose growth factor today is yesterday's growth factor times a constant. For the exponential, that constant never changes, whence the power of the exponential, Hannington's infamous piece. If cases double today, they will double tomorrow. For the normal curve, and it is a quirk of that specific curve, if f is 2 today and g is 0.9, then tomorrow's growth factor will be 2 times 0.9 or 1.8. Growth is declining from the very beginning. Despite every chart for every contagion being humped, normal or quasi-normal, which means it must have a declining growth rate, not one mainstream article or luminary has stood up to shoot down the exponential meme that caused and still causes so much fear. The growth of contagions is dying from the very beginning, but no one mentions that. More to the point, people track R, which is a measure of growth, but is hardly natural or intuitive to calculate. Per wiki, suppose that infectious individuals make an average of beta infection producing contacts per unit time with a mean infectious period of tau, then the basic reproduction number r is beta times tau. Aha! Uh -huh. Any idea how to calculate that? I don't, nor do I need to. Far more useful is our simple growth calculation, today's cases over yesterday's for example and we can take the ratio of those factors to find out how fast the growth rate is changing. All very simple arithmetic. R is for the birds, frankly, because apart from anything else, it completely ignores the invaluable properties that growth decline analysis has, like a straight line trajectory to debunk claims about lockdown. But all of that has been covered extensively in our other 90-odd videos. Let's focus on the issue of normalizing the abnormal with first a brief look at the country focus issue. I get that if you're limited for time, relying on others for analysis, or it's just your emotional inclination, it can be tempting to look at e.g. the US and then compare it to a few obvious candidates like the European nations. Then you look to understand what might have made a difference. Do that, however, and you've just missed the biggest story of COVID-19, and if you're a publisher, have massively misled your viewers. Not ideal, whether pro or anti-agenda. Let's say your natural inclination is to look at the US and perhaps a few select countries, Italy, Sweden, the UK, Ireland maybe, a natural selection and you use the charts from your preferred source and you publish your piece. Now, whether you're a Nobel laureate or a decent, kind, smart, anti-agenda publisher, whatever you say is basically going to be nonsense. Maybe entirely accurate, but ignoring the elephant in the room. This is how mainstream media end up publishing gosh, how did Japan do so well articles? Did it? Oh, well, we didn't mask up, obviously. Now back to our story, which is really the only story that matters. And there it is, utter reversal of the truth, and if this has been your focus, you're totally unaware of it. It isn't that these countries are normal and the rest are ignored, but if one does well, it's abnormal. It's that these are the countries that are the most abnormal in the world, and here listed also a couple of US cities, with New York City topping the list of abnormal with its Cuomo virus. The picture's changed a bit, which is why I wanted to find an early such list to illustrate how the natural focus of a Westerner can lead to an egregious misrepresentation of COVID-19. 
Now, what are we looking at? Normalized deaths per 100 million population, our standard metric. And what's that on the right? How much worse those figures are than the Southeast Asia region and the Far East, which is SEA plus Western Pacific. So you're doing an honest, sincere piece on the US, UK, France, Sweden and Ireland and arguing over whether Sweden was foolish. And you have no idea that New York City has a virus 485 times more deadly than the Far East, 582 times worse than Southeast Asia. It's like discussing whether your forest fire is worse than your neighbour's forest fire when you're blissfully unaware of gangs of arsonists going around starting forest fires. Like, what? Please note that this set of videos was on the list for a while, but it got triggered because a lot of people sent me links to Ivor Cummins' generally excellent video update, 909, on COVID-19. He's sensible, smart, debunking the narrative, a massive force for good. But I was disturbed to see the Gompers glibly cited, fair enough, for Nobel laureate likes them, and that said luminary, Levitt, I think, when I watched him, was blithely discussing possible reasons for the US-Europe discrepancy. Like, what? Here's our world ranking for 140, 154 regions that are greater than 1 million population, greater than 1,000 cases. So legitimate countries, or a couple of cities, not escapees. And it's from June 24th. My God, that's three months into the contagion and three months ago. Gee, Daddy, why are we the world's richest and most devastated country in the world? Well, darling, it's air pollution and the distribution of our cities. Like it is. Uh, no, it isn't. Wake up. Fast forward to August 17th, which I'm using for a reason, and what's notable is the massive intrusion of South America. Green. No idea what's going on there. They're not exactly agenda countries. The agenda, by the way, if you hadn't heard, massive threat, 510,000 UK deaths, 2.2 million US deaths, lockdown, wait for the vaccine. They told you there'd be no normal till the vaccine. They meant it. Here's the full listing for August 17th, which will zoom for you. Now, we chose the August listing because as of the 29th, we produced this graphic and people love graphics, including me, because they are so expressive. A few Central South American nations, but here's what a Euro US centric person would be looking at. New York City's pretty wild, but hey, it's a city crowded. Now, what about those minor differences between the rest? Except here's the world that's being ignored. Basically, away from our cosy Western perspective, the world is brushing off the virus without any issue, and nobody notices. Every one of these countries had at least one million population and over a thousand cases, plenty enough to start a full-on scary epidemic. But the COVID-19 virus blanked. It got brushed aside. So if you're discussing COVID-19 in the West as if it's typical, you're missing that you're living in the middle of Arson Central. And I don't care whether you're a Nobel Laureate or just a decent guy, or hopefully not, an agenda promoter. Japan isn't an exception because it masked and its people are naturally polite and respectful. The West is the exception because it's got people selling you an agenda and using massive propaganda to do it. If you take COVID-19 seriously as a threat, and you can look at this chart and still take COVID-19 seriously as a threat, then I'm at a loss. But let's shift the perspective a little. GDP. We already know that the Western countries aren't the poorest in the world. Maybe this is an anti-rich virus. But no, GDP is spread evenly from best to worst. No signal there. As a threat versus standard mortality, blue dots are the nominal standard non-COVID deaths we'd expect in 100 million people in six months, 1st of March to 29th August. Other than New York City's brave effort, 
no one has made serious inroads with COVID-19. And to try to tell me that three quarters of the world's COVID-19 hit nations, bottom chart and right hand side of top chart, had COVID-19 as a serious threat? That's delusional, seriously. The world's richest Western nations managed to get massively hit by comparison to the rest of the world, and they still didn't do better than maybe 20%, typically 10% of standard mortality, and they ended democracy because of it. If you were unaware of this perspective until now, then ask yourself why. All those media outlets, all those pundits, all those scientists, and nobody told you this was brushed off and never a serious threat. I wonder why. We don't need conspiracy theories, we just do government data. But sure, Event 201, Ferguson, Gates April 5th Fox News, Gates 79 million to Imperial College, Gates Johnson meeting, Gates Johnson Gavi. It's not rocket science. They told you no normal till a vaccine. They meant it. So let's take a look at one more variant, the world's top 30 pharma companies per wiki by market cap and assigned to their countries. Gee, Japan on its own, like we said, Western countries. Denmark, Germany, Switzerland still in the top quarter of worst hit, but having some respect for their people. And look who's right there. The countries with the least respect for the people, the most dramatic shutdown of democracy, the wave after wave of measures to keep you distracted and focused on the threat. This one slide alone is all you need to understand the narrative, if you didn't already, and all you need to do to put a lot of people in jail, if only we could find an honest court and an honest judge. No normal till the vaccine. So next time someone tries to give you a rational explanation for the results in the Western nations, ask them if they have a world ranking handy and whether they can explain the discrepancy between the most powerful nations in the West, absurdly hit, and the impoverished, disease-ridden Africans, brushing it off, Asia and the Far East, brushing it off, European, non-EU countries, brushing it off. Only South America is having a real issue and I have no idea how much of that is indeed real. But the charts look fraudulent, but that's another story. Check out our chart update. Here's our latest world rankings by coincidence also 9th of September. I'm all for anyone who's debunking the narrative and fighting the agenda, but sometimes you really do need to have a global perspective. It's a bit late to start on an intro to formal, normal and complex analysis, so let's leave it there and continue in the next video. I think we've made our point about US Eurocentric presentations. If you don't understand just how abnormal the Western experience is, you're missing the most critical element of that experience. And as a luminary or publisher, you're likely misleading your audience, or at the very least, failing to convey the most critical and damning element of this entire COVID-19 experience. And it's the simplest of all to generate and fact check. World Health Organization dashboard, data download. Go for it. That's it for now. I'm Andrew Mather, a 6 year old Brit, mathematician, financier, technologist, husband, biker, pilot, healer, whatever. If feel free to get in touch, andrew at peerlessreads.com or andrewamather.com. Either should get to me.